Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, probably a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN. I am one of your hosts, Ty Ty Windish, joined as always by my just, you know, just like Mr. Good Times, Rohan Kadi. Rohan, how's it going? I, I'm doing I'm doing well. Mr. Good Times is uh, <laughs> very, uh, uh, let's say it's an indicative of what's to come. Uh, but uh, it, that's what Tai Tai is one pronunciation of your name right now. That's what we're going on, with. Both on that. That's... I mean, you, on X.com, you got to do what you got to do, my guy. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Listen. Um, Tai Tai Washington Jr., who I almost said, I'm so used to saying Washington after Tai Tai, signed with the Bucks on a two way deal. We're going to talk a lot about that. And what I think is a really intriguing strategy. Can I, can I say something first to the yeah. listener? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like, you know, we're in peak off season and we know we're in peak, uh, tie has a bit mode. Yeah. Cause as soon as Ty Ty Washington Jr. signed a two way contract, he messaged me saying emergency. Yeah. Conway. You you didn't think I was, I was about it, about it. Uh, you should know better. I know, but it's like, it's, that is the most Ty Ty windish thing yeah. I can think of is man. Ty Ty Washington's at emergency. Conway well, right now. I, I, I just want to imagine things are different. They draft Ty Ty, Marjan flames out somewhere and gets released, and they sign Marjan to a two way. You're not That's you're fair. not banging down my door. I think you are. That is fair. That is fair. So the thing is, Marjan wouldn't flame out somewhere. That's okay. Fair enough. Listen. So I'll do the quick background now. If people are really confused, Ty Ty Washington Jr. was drafted 29th and 22. So last year, first round pick last year by the Rockets, did not play much there in the NBA. Did not play well. Played mainly with the G League team, the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Uh, they ran out of roster spots. They're trying to compete now, whatever. We've said, we've shared our thoughts. We don't think it's going to go well. But they traded him to OKC. OKC didn't have enough roster spots. They cut him. Now he signs a two-way contract with the Bucks. They had one two-way spot open. The others are filled by Lindell Wigginton and by Amari Moore. So we will talk all about that. There's a little bit of news. This not really news. We have to dunk on someone for something this morning. We'll do that in a second here. But um, but I was huge on Ty Ty Washington. Like he was my pick. I think Kentucky guards are usually a market inefficiency. Like they're usually good, but they don't look very good at Kentucky because Cal is so much better at recruiting than he is at actually coaching the teams he puts together. Uh, we've just seen guys succeed in that role over and over again. Um, and I think getting him on a flyer like this is is really good business. And I tweeted before the 22 draft that I would go by Ty Ty Windish if they added him before the season started. So I'm going to now do that until the 23-24 season starts. So very excited to meet someone who has double the ties uh, in Oshkosh, presumably, because again, a two-way player, he should be spending some time with the herd. I'm very excited to cover him and the rest of the, the players on the herd this season under new head coach Ben Udra. I don't know if we've really we haven't. That. That's yeah. that's also news that we yeah. need to talk about, I guess. But it's like, what was what was your first take on uh, that actually dropping? I mean, it's not shocking that a new coach would bring in a new G League coach. I think, I think Bud might have waited one year before bringing in Chase Buford, if I recall correctly. But I believe it, it was one year. Yeah. But I think it was, and you know, things weren't going well for Jordan Brady, the first head coach of the herd, and 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 then that that move was made, and then. You know, Buford moves on to Australia and Chase and Allen takes over from his staff. And that's still, again, the same NBA coaching staff. So that's kind of continuing. Now that things are different, you know, it's not I, – I, I thought Chase and Allen certainly had a shot to keep the job. I think his players liked him well enough. Certainly they, they haven't had the record success that Buford had. But also, you know, that's not the whole goal of the G League. I think they've done well developing players. I think like someone like Lindell Wigginton certainly is poised to have a real role to some extent this year. Uh, because he developed under Allen on the G League team, also played some NBA games. So I didn't know which way they were going to go. Um, but of course, then we just got the news right one day that it was going to be Benno. So um, looking forward to his introductory press conference. I think I'll have a lot more for listeners after that, whenever that's going to be. It's uh, another uh, another coach in the Bucks organization coming back. Yeah, another. I, I was I tweeted that. I don't know how many teams have ever had two former players coaching the NBA and G League. Of course, um, uh, Adrian Griffin didn't do it in the regular season for the Bucks, but was a Bucks player in training camp, at least. Yes, he's put on a Bucks jersey. Yes. Oh. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm going to get myself up to some uh, herd games as I tend to do every season. Obviously, Ty, you're going to be there more uh, in Oshkosh. Oh, yeah. But uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be a fun G League season. Yeah, the the Ty, Ty, Ty interviews uh, are going to be oh, a they're going to be beauty, elect- I think. Yeah. Electric. Anyway, so this morning, um, uh, Jordan Tresky brought this to our attention, I believe. Uh, Henry Abbott at True Hoop. Um, I'm trying to think if like if it's worth explaining to the people who aren't online. This is like NBA QAnon kind of account, basically. Rohan, am I wrong? <laughs> You're not, but that's okay. also that's also a very online way of describing. It. Fair. Um, the conspiracy NBA theorists, yeah. like yeah, let's do pretty that. pretty cringe, pretty cringe. Yeah. Uh, this is the tweet. What should the Bucks do? Trade everybody and start over, says at Coach Thorpe. And then you have to you have to actually like log in to read the whole article. I'm certainly not going to do that. Coach Thorpe is David Thorpe, so it's not Henry Abbott's thing that he wrote. Yeah did I did I say at Coach Thorpe? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah yeah. So yeah, but it's his it's his publication. Well yes yes yes. yes. Um, let's be honest. Milwaukee is not Mykonos. A oh, good one. Um, nice. It's just like because of what Giannis said to the New York Times, which, again, we did a whole pod about this. If you want to listen to our full thoughts about that, it's like last week at this time, actually. We, we did that. It's two um, pods ago. Yeah. It's the perfect time to dismantle the Bucks. I just want to read real quick. You know, the Bucks have had to trade a superstar big man before. And listen, when you can get four prospects like Elmore Smith, Brian Winters, Junior Bridgman, and Dave Myers for your generational big man, you have to do it. And that means it'll only take five decades to get back in a position to win another title. So why would you not learn from the past? Look, the Bucks were, you know, so set up from that trade to be mid forever, which they were. I know the 80s Bucks were very good, but I'm making a point, which they were forever until they got lucky enough to happen in Giannis. So let's just, Rohan and I can be 60 and 70 respectively the next time the, the Bucks are worth a damn. Why not, right? I mean, once you if you have a team ready to compete for a title, you know what you need to do? You need to tear it down so you can try and make a team that's ready to compete for a title. First seed in the East. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's a, what, what, are, what are we doing here? Yeah. You have a team that is at the stage where you want it to be. It's the whole oh my god! It's the it's that Family Guy thing where it's like you can have a boat or you can have a box like a mystery box, and it's like wow, I could anything could be in that mystery box. It could even be a boat. You know how long I've wanted a boat? It's that same logic. Like, what's the point of tearing down if you're already at the point that you would want to get to if you tore down? And like, if people want to be low on the box. That's one thing. The funny thing is, like, general consensus. I feel like. I think that people generally favor Denver, even though they, they got worse this offseason. But that's fair. But it's like the Bucs are one of the two or three teams seen as Denver most likely I wouldn't to say win. they really got worse. They got they lost Bruce Brown. They added no one. That's worse. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, they, they are worse, yes. Yeah. I'm not saying that they, they can't win again, but I, I don't think their team got better. Yeah, the Heat lost two starters. Yep. The Celtics just completely uh A bad passing the- team that lost their best passer. Yes, and uh, have to change the entire way they play defense, which was their strong suit. Yeah. And the Sixers were never really in the picture anyway. <laughs> yeah. but, we uh, just bring them up to laugh at them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, if Miami gets Damian Lillard, yeah, that's a different story. Newsflash, they haven't gotten Damian Lillard. Yeah. What The the Bucks are a consensus. Like, even in, like, all sports books you can find, I think they have the second best odds in the East, at least, and, like, top five title odds. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of analysts have them above the Celtics just because they don't have to figure out a whole new identity, which basically Boston does. I think on and off court, moving smart for Porzingis, the Bucks retain their key players. And, like, yes, I, I just feel like people, they skip steps and make logical jumps that just don't really make any sense at all if you think about it. Are the Bucks old? Yes, we've covered this. Like they need to pivot. I I was on actually I think Nick's Film School and Hardwood Knox this week. Two tremendous Blue Wire podcasts. If you want to go check those out, good conversations about a lot of these topics. And you know, like there, it's fair to look 
one, two, three years down the road and be like, oh, what are they going to do? It's going to be a tough spot. It's going to be precarious. That's fine. I, I think I think they're set up pretty well, which I've said on those shows and, and this show. They still have to do it. It's not guaranteed. You know, the pivot, of course, but they they have a, a chance to do that, to either move on or add to Chris and Drew and keep this thing rolling. But for this season, where Chris barely played last year and they were first seed in the East and all these weird things happened against Miami, but the year before, with no Chris, they were a half away from beating the eventual Eastern Conference champion, Boston Celtics. I think it's insane to suggest you tear down this season. I think either you're so weak-willed that a gentle push from Giannis in the same interview where he says he would still love to play his whole career with the Bucs, are you so weak that a, an interview where he says that, you're, you're panicked and you have to trade him? I, I certainly wouldn't be. I certainly don't think John Horst is because I think Giannis has said stronger than this before. Or are you just so so low on this core, which I guess that that's a fine – it's really not. I think actually it's a terrible basketball opinion to have, but people can believe whatever they want uh, in the good old U.S. of A. I, I don't know or anywhere, but I, I, I just I don't get it. I don't think it makes any logical sense. I think it's stupid. Um, and I think it's a sad state of hoops discourse where a publication that this is probably their only time writing about the Bucks, what this year, unless there's some weird shady conspiracy they make up. Like it's about how they should tear it down when they won 58 games last season with barely any Chris Middleton. And now they have a new coaching staff to address some schematic things. I, I just, I think it's really sad. I think NBA discourse in general still is at kind of a, a shitty place. I'll just, I, I was so close so many times, but, um, but I'm glad. I mean, there are a lot of great smaller like us outlets who really care about the game and the teams. And I just think the more, it's so hard to do it well nationally. I think Hardwood Knox, Dunker Spot are some good examples. There's not many, um, and I just think it's really disappointing. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, you you have to – this emphasizes the importance of, like, basketball on a local – like, again, we – like, I said I said that in jest, but it also proves the point that we – Ty was banging my door down trying to get an emergency pot on Ty, Ty Washington. Like, the, the, you, it's support, support your local sort of, uh, like, basketball uh, coverage because this is the type of stuff you get nationally. And it's like – this is worse than most national things. Yeah. It's, it's just so stupid. much worse. It's so much worse. And I mean, I from their perspective, maybe I get it. This is going to be their most read piece of the year. So, yeah. Does it count as a read if you just read to the point where they try and get you to sign up? And then hope, probably does, unfortunately. I think it does. I contributed. Um, yeah, yeah. We're but, one of us and Win and Six are two of like five podcasts that actually talk about the Bucks. So, if you like the Bucks, you should listen to those podcasts more than than other podcasts. Yeah, and like you said, hardwood knocks, dunker spot. Those yeah. are those are some really good examples. Absolutely. Okay. Enough. I just we we had to address it. Uh, I'm already seeing it's going all over. It was just published this morning. Uh, also, it's old. Like, come on, that interview was last week, my guy. Like, yeah, it took you that long to come up with this to dip the. He's busy coaching. He's busy coaching. What is he? he's like a skills guy, right? Like he's a trainer. he's a motivational speaker now. He has a whole website about how he he inspires business leaders with basketball principles oh god yeah, this is like, not good like for the the, the the sad end of wolf of wall street was the vibe i got this is like if, if this guy's a motivational speaker i want to know what he's saying like, <laughs> I mean, even now okay that's unfair i shouldn't attack this uh this was pretty demotivational. also my least favorite low post guest but that's that's an okay let's talk about ty ty washington jr kentucky guard six foot three with a six foot eight wingspan not yet 22 years old. I think getting a player like this on a two-way is a huge coup for the Bucs, to be honest. Uh, obviously, I, I have my priors here. And I want to be clear from the jump. I have no idea if he'll be good for the Milwaukee Bucks ever. I don't know. I think this is actually a pretty solid chance. But it's not that I think he's going to come in and light it up and be like the best point guard we've ever seen or anything like that. But I think this is the kind of extremely intelligent move that it just it's it's a free opportunity at such right it's a free chance to find someone who could be a long time contributor i don't know did you see the um the age thing i i looked at the other day on twitter or x.com no i didn't what was it 
So counting two-way spots, the Bucks now have five players born in 2000 or later. Marjon and Amari Moore in 2000, Andre Jackson Jr., Ty Ty Washington Jr. in 01, Chris Livingston 03, which still makes me feel old as dirt. He's as old as LeBron's NBA career. Think about it. Oh, my God. Maybe younger, depending on when he was in 2003 he was born. But isn't that – that's crazy. That's um, crazy. And then last you know year – You know what's crazy? What? Starting like next year, like what is that, 2024? Yeah. Those those like people born in 2003 are going to be in bars. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, one of my got old moments was people born after 2000 being legal drinking age at all. Yeah. It was like, oh, wow. Okay. People um, born in 2008 are going to be driving. Oof. Um, but Bochamp was the only one last year at the start. I think at any point, really, but certainly at the start of, of the season that was born in 2000 or later. So he is now like the fifth oldest counting two ways on the Bucks. I don't know who's younger, him or Amari Moore, but whatever, fourth or fifth. And he was the youngest. So the, all this to say, like the youth movement is a real thing. Like there are many more young players. And I think taking these swings is is always a good idea. We've talked about that a bunch. Let's focus on Ty Ty first. And I want to go to the overall point guard strategy, which I do think is pretty fascinating. But what are your thoughts, if you have any, on, on Ty Ty Washington Jr.? I mean, it's like just as a prospect, yeah, you have that you have that size with the wingspan. It's like maybe six three is a little little small, but again, you are a point guard. And you can't you can't expect everyone to be like Josh Giddy or like Shea or anyone. I'm just naming Thunder players now. Uh, their team is so fun. Their team is so fun. Both Shea and Giddy just dominating internationally is fun. Uh, oh, I guess we we missed some news. Uh, USA Greece both advance. Yeah, in the, in the World it, Cup. I really, I don't know if you got to watch the Greece game Wednesday morning. Really intense. The Nas is playing through an adductor, forces a couple turnovers, didn't play a ton. Massive comeback. Huge comeback. They were down doubled like eleven in the third quarter, I think, and they ended up winning comfortably to move on. So really inspiring stuff from Greece. Next round will be hard, Montenegro and Lithuania, but they they've got themselves a shot. It was an inspiring performance. Uh, from Papa Nicolau, Papianis, and the rest of the Greek side. It was, it was. But back to back to uh, Tai Tai here. So you get like someone who has like solid shooting mechanics as well. It's like some, it doesn't necessarily translate, but you look at like free throw percentages, and that'll usually dictate if guys are like a solid shooter or not. He has the he has the ability. He has the touch. He, like the motion actually looks good. Like it doesn't look broken or anything. Which is which is nice. I uh, uh, can't say the same for like Andre Jackson Jr. Uh, man, that I really hope they're reworking. You're that. so yeah. disappointed after summer league. You're so and just in the shot, not in him as a player, but just in no, the shot. Not the shot is gross. The shot is so gross. It is like you don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like you can be like a Tyrese Halliburton and still succeed. But the thing is, Tyrese Halliburton makes his shots. So and his is just smoother. Yeah, it's so much smoother. And, and we've just, it actually has a solid release point. It's, it's it's been effective too. Like he shot in college. People didn't know if he'd be able to, and he's just proven them wrong. Versus Andre Jackson does not have that same like. No, I can shoot this way. It's more like no, it's it's broken. No, but but I'm confident. I'm more confident in Ty Ty Washington Jr.'s ability to be like a solid three point shooter in the league than like an Andre Jackson Jr. Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing is just um, c- point guards usually take a little while. So it's not surprising to see a guy who would go late in the first anyway. I mean, we've seen guys who go early in the first. Who's the the magic point guard that we're still kind of oh, waiting? Really? Not Well, I guess, yes. Um, I guess more of a two guard from like two years ago, three years ago. Uh Maybe he's not. Maybe, he's, maybe calling him a point guard. I know guard. who it is. Yeah. Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs. Yes. Thugs. Maybe not a true point guard anyway. But um, certainly, like, just guards who are going to handle the ball, unless they're literally Luka Doncic, who no one else is besides Luka, it generally takes a while to to figure it out and play point guard well at that level. I will say he had a couple good NBA games, like solid good. Overall, his stats are quite bad. I believe he averaged 4.7 points, shot 36% from the field and 23% from three with the Rockets. He also played in six wins and 25 losses. But the two games he started, he averaged over 30 minutes. 
He scored 15 points, four assists, two steals, and one. 10 points, three assists, four rebounds, one steal, and the other. Um, he shot a combined eight for 22, which is like high 30%. So not great. Actually did shoot a little better from three in those games. But a lot of these games are less than 15 minutes. Just like go out there and try and play. I think it's really hard for anyone to get a rhythm in, in a role like that, but especially a rookie point guard on a bad team. Although, if you look at his G League numbers, I, I actually, I was wrong. I thought he struggled in the G League as well. I think I may have said that previously too. That is very much not the case. In 18 combined showcase and regular season games for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers, who went to the finals but lost to the Delaware Blue Coats. I love G League team names. Um, Ty Ty in 34 and a half minutes averaged 23 points, uh, six assists, four and a half rebounds, shot 43% from the field, 31% from three in the regular season. And then in the playoffs in five games in 40 minutes a game, just under 30 points per game, 29.8, seven assists, seven rebounds, just 2.8 turnovers, shot 35% from three, 43% from the field, 80% from free throw. And in the combined showcase and regular season, he also shot 83% from free throw, which if you're unaware, that's a very good sign usually for a player's ability to expand that shot long term. So 80% um, throughout the G League season. And I believe he shot decently well. At the, I don't know. He shot 55% at the NBA. Never mind. Yeah, I was going to say maybe not the NBA level. Yeah, but that but, is that is on like 15 attempts, it looks like. Yeah, it's it's point, very small. Six in thirty one games, so fifteen total shots. Um, so really productive in the G League, though, which is something. You know, it doesn't mean he's going to be great this season again, but it, it's certainly better than nothing. And the latest play that we saw from him, the G League playoffs, was his best ball. I mean, thirty seven and seven in the G League finals is is not automatic for any young player. That was nice to see. So I think clearly there's still some of that potential in there that a lot of people, myself included saw him at the draft. Also, one last thing before I let you talk. I know I've said a lot about info dump. I think Sam Vecini, I tweeted this, had him like 14th on his big board going into that draft. So it wasn't just me who was high on him. Yeah, 14th on Vecini's big board before the draft. So I had him first on a buck specific one. This, of course, did not count the top prospects, just ones who would be available at the Marjon pick. Um, so I, all this to say, I'm very excited. Um, I think this is a really fun move and very fortuitous for him to wind up on the bucks for just a two way contract. Yeah. It's, it's, if you can get a guy with who clearly has talent, like if you just look at his G league stats, like you had mentioned, there's talent there. Like it doesn't just because it's the G league doesn't mean you can't like, it takes a lot of skill to like dominate the G league, which he was doing. He was absolutely tearing up the G league. And like it's it just shows coupled with the fact that he's a young point guard is it just takes time to to implement that at the NBA level. And he hasn't had a lot of time like he's had like what was it like two NBA starts at in 31 games total. And it's like, yeah, of course, he's not on the Rockets nonetheless. Like, yeah, you're not going to be able to to do anything in that dumpster fire of a team. Like you're not going to be able to actually learn how to play at the NBA level again when you're with the Houston Rockets last season, maybe this season too. It's gonna it's gonna be a mess. Uh, still hot take. It's still gonna be. It'll a mess. be better, but yeah, still a mess. Yeah, there's still gonna be a lottery team. Uh, it's like, but it's, if you're still gonna be a lottery team, why why are you paying these guys so much? What whatever. Like the Rockets are weird. Uh, but yeah, there's talent there, and if you're on a team like the box who has like actual developmental pieces like we've talked a lot about with adrian griffin is like his ability to really like him and his staff to like try and get the best out of players yeah you're going to want to do that in milwaukee and especially if you have guys to learn from like uh like drew holiday like like grayson allen like like all pat connett and all these guys yeah it's it's a good environment to work in maybe not to be a point guard because the bucks don't have a point guard on their roster uh outside well, two ways get but. to get to play with lindell in the at the g league level i mean that's a good yeah. someone to learn from i mean not, lindell's not a, a grizzled you know 10-year nba vet but certainly has came and prove it on the g league level before and especially could maybe offer some help defensively which is probably one of the areas along with shooting tie tie needs to improve in the most 
Yeah, for sure. Like you have if you if you want defense, obviously the Bucks are like they have a lot of players you can learn yeah. from. Uh but yeah, offensively Lindell's a good good shout. Like even like a guy like you can learn alongside a guy like Amari Moore. Yep. Uh, just how to implement the talent because they both are very talented. How do, how do you implement that at the NBA level? Yeah, I think it's actually interesting. Um, Ty Ty averaged more points, more assists, shot better from the field, but not from three, but better from free throw than Lindell did in the G League last season. So a year I've talked about is very impressive from Lindell Wigginton. Lindell did get the the three-point shot up to 34%, which was close to a career high for him since his rookie year. Um, And Ty Ty had about the same turnovers, so it wasn't a much worse effectiveness on the assist to turnover ratio is like 2.9 to 3 so again like actually impressed me how solid the numbers were for a rookie and nba level a mess of a situation where you know who knows how much developmental energy was given to ty ty washington in particular i mean you look at the rockets they have kevin porter jr maybe a little older maybe doesn't need as much work but you know still not a finished player jalen green usman garuba you know, they have um, the the center that they're so excited about that they think is baby Jokic, which I would slow down a little bit there. But their, their whole roster was pretty much prospects last year. Um, so I think there could be room for Ty Ty to develop more this year. I want to talk about – actually, first, before we get into – I have some ideas on the strategy here. So the Bucks don't have a backup point guard. They have four on the roster now, including two ways. But they don't have a backup on the NBA roster. How would you rank the three two ways in terms of most likely to contribute this season overall, not just to start this season? I'd say if I'm ranking the two ways, I'd go Lindell first. Then I'd go Ty Ty. And then yeah. I'd go Omari Moore. I agree with you. Um, it's a little unfair. Omari just didn't get to do much at Summer League. And I don't know if that's on him and how he's looked or not. But I do agree. I mean, when you have someone who's been like a 37-7 and seven guy in the G League before, you probably should automatically slot him in over an undrafted rookie, right? Like, I just think that that's logical. So I agree with you. I th- Who do you think where, – where's the gap farther between Lindell and Ty Ty or between Ty Ty and Amari? I'd say, honestly, I don't think there's much of a gap anyway. Yeah. I, I think it's because, like, be fairly okay, maybe, maybe, I think th- I think the gap is probably a little bigger between Lindell and uh, Ty Ty than it is between Ty Ty and Amari, because just because Lindell has solid like NBA experience, yeah, he's he's uh, done it. He's done much more than either of those two with the Bucks already, which should matter. Although with a different coaching staff too, with a different coaching staff, but the results show themselves nonetheless. Uh, and Adrian Griffin knows that he's not an idiot, so. Uh, I would say Lindell first, just because especially with the point guard position, you need some experience. Like, what did we just spend a bunch of time talking about? It's difficult for young players to start uh, in the NBA or start getting their feet wet in the NBA at the point guard position because it it takes some time. Lindell's done some of that time. Like, he's the most experienced out of those three. I agree. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how fast either of the other two could could try to catch up with and maybe they just don't. Maybe Lindell is is good this season and holds it down and they end up opening a spot. I do feel like so this gets into the strategy question now. I do think these three guys have a shot to fill the backup point guard hole on the real roster before they would make a trade. And I've talked about the concept before of It's hard to bring in a ball handler and give up real assets unless they're very good because then in the playoffs, they're just standing there and exhibit a Joe Ingles. And maybe they could have used him more, but also, you know, we did a whole pot on offense. Most of our pod focused on ways that Chris Drew and Giannis could be better utilized on the ball because those are your primaries on this core. You know, if you trade for Monty Morris, how much is he going to have the ball in the playoffs? I think is a fair question. Um, it's going to be a reworked offense. Maybe the answer is quite a bit and we'd run more sets for those guys. But so far we've seen them be the primaries on, on most things. So if you can fill that hole of backup point guard with someone already on the roster, Rohan Kadi, um, what did I call you? The, 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 not the glowing one. What did I call you on the intro? Um, what did you say? It was like, wow. uh, no, it was like, uh, it was like, 
It was no, like lights Mr. Of a party or something. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Yeah, I don't know what whatever it was. I don't know why I was thinking of that now. But if you can um, fill that need, is that still going to be an eyebrow raise? If anyone's not watching on YouTube, Rohan gets me at least once per pod with a distracting eyebrow raise. If you can utilize a two-way point guard to occupy that role, that one's got to be safe. Um, then you're feeding more into your development program and keeping more sustainable players and also saving assets for this summer, which is, again, a time I think there could be a, a big roster move. So it's going to be really interesting to see. This is almost like an NFL camp position battle. Shouts to Talk of the Tundra. I had to make sure I said the right GSPN pod who just did their cut day predictions and then cut day reactions. And then there's more cut day stuff happening in the yeah. NFL and the Packers make sure you right check, now. Make sure you check that out. Links are at yeah. gspn.info or just look Talk of the Tundra up on your podcast. Wherever, platform yeah. Or if you're on YouTube, it's already on this YouTube channel. Yeah, just click on the channel and go go find the playlist. Um, they're going to be covering the Packers all season long. It should be a really fun one. Jordan Love under helm, but or under the uh, – uh, whatever. But speaking of at the helm, uh, speaking, at, the helm. at the helm, thank you. Speaking under center at the helm. Uh, speaking of a team though with some young guys fighting for for roles, I mean that's pretty much what they're doing with backup point guard. And I I don't know the last time. I mean obviously I don't follow every team's two way situation that closely, but it feels different to pretty much just load up on three of the same position. I mean of course this is the first year you can have three, but. Three point guards. They're all point guards, it's certainly at the NBA level. I mean, Lindell has played off ball. We'll see what Amari Moore ends up being, but I'd say they're all closer to point than anything else. It kind of feels like just an open competition here of like over the season, who is going to earn the opportunity to be either Drew's backup or the emergency backup, depending on how the rest of the rotation fills out. I think it's a fascinating idea. And honestly, why not? Like, why go and try and get like positional diversity on the two-way spots if there's never going to be an NBA role? I remember they yeah. had Cam Reynolds, who was like more of a wing player when they had Frank Mason. And he like he had a pretty decent, he had a struggled shooting at times, but I thought he looked like a decent two-way wing. The Bucks have always had so many like 6'5, six, 6'6 six, six wing players. He like almost never got to play. I mean, like I, for, it, I forgot about him. Until yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there, there was not much memorable for for Bucks and not herd watchers because the, I mean, you know, Grayson. I don't know if they had Grayson that year, but you know, Pat and all the other Bryn Forbes. They always bring in a new six five guy every year. They all, of course, have had Chris forever. You know, they've had their point guard, whether it's Bledsoe or Drew. They've had George Hill, who plays some too, was in there for that time. Like it's really hard Javon. to crack Javon. Yeah. So I think loading up on guys who all of them, of course not, but one of them could have a real shot to play minutes if they earn it is probably a better idea. I can't wait to see how it works. I can't wait to see like, you know, is it is it difficult for those guys to have three point guards on the herd? I would imagine not. I think you can really do three guard lineups at the herd level pretty easily. Maybe four if they with Gortman as well. We'll see. Um, but it's it's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out and how many of these guys – get real NBA minutes this year. Yeah. I mean, at the G league level, as long as you got drew Timmy, you're all good. So um, it'll, it'll be fun for sure. But to your point, like, yeah, we haven't really seen anything like this to my knowledge in any like uh, two way situation in the league. It's just like, it's a straight up position battle for an actual role on the team, which maybe that's a fault of the roster construction when you have to do that. Yeah, but also it brings in one thing that's very, very interesting is that one, these are all two way contracts, meaning you have limited NBA days. So it's yeah. once if you find a winner, like a quote unquote winner at the end of this, and it's like that winner has already exhausted their NBA time. What do you do? Got to open a roster spot, I think. You have to. Yeah. Like, there's going to be some roster changes made maybe fairly early in the season, depending on how this plays out. Yeah, the other interesting thing is that that's a good one. And I, I don't – I mean, people – you can identify two brothers of rotation players who don't factor to be in the rotation. Maybe one of them opens up a spot. I don't know if the Bucks would want to deal one of them. Outside of those two guys, I'm not really sure their clear path. I mean, is the grace and trade some people have been clamoring for finally going to happen? I, I don't know. Or if um, like Malik Beasley doesn't work out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, could it be just like a, a two-for-one trade? Could it be uh, just sending a guy away? I mean, I'd be pretty surprised if either of the, the rookies were traded. I wouldn't expect that. Like, I wouldn't expect A.J. Green to be traded. You know, maybe if, if a player suffered an injury, we obviously hope this doesn't happen, but we've seen sometimes those players are dealt away to open up a roster spot or cap space. Any number of things could happen. Um, but, yeah, I think they're, they're, I would expect – at least there'll be a roster spot opened up for one of these guys if one of them pops. Otherwise, the Bucks will probably just be point guard shopping uh, on NBA players. The other thing is it's actually probably a four-way position battle. Jazzy and Gortman, who I think after Summer League, Bucks fans are maybe most excited about, is on an Exhibit 10 deal. But two-way contracts are not like guaranteed. I mean, he could win a two-way spot in camp or preseason from one of these three players pretty easily, not easily, I should say, but, like, but it's there, there isn't an avenue it's to do so. It's yeah. doable. It's not like an NBA deal where they'd have to owe, you know, 10 million in, in luxury tax or whatever. Two ways you can pretty much just cycle guys until a certain deadline late in the year, in the NBA year. So I, I wouldn't rule out Gortman having a shot at this too. Like I think camp at the point guard spot is going to be really competitive for the, the two way spot and for, you know, who gets first dibs at NBA minutes and any games Drew misses or just whenever they feel they need another point guard up there. I think it's going to add like a whole new level of excitement to the whole roster. Whereas the last couple of years, I mean, last year it was what Mamu and AJ Green and AJ impressed when he got time due to injuries mostly. But Mamu was, it was that same situation as Cam Reynolds, right? Like he was never going to play. And yeah. like Giannis also missed time. Also dominating for the for the Georgia national team at their first ever FIBA I, World Cup. I think he's going to be a good player. I think he's going to be an NBA player. I mean, he yeah. is now. He got signed by the Spurs again. But um, but with the Bucs, like, you know, I think we we agreed on the podcast. Giannis missed like a week or two, right? And Mamu did not get any run. And it was like, okay, he's never going to play. It's, it not, it's not a shot at Mamu, who I'm a fan of and is a good guy. But if Giannis is out for a week, two weeks, and he gets no run at that time, he's never going to play for the Bucs, and that's what happened. So I think these guys, the path is so much clearer to any one of them. And it's kind of a – it's almost like the Bucks acknowledging like, hey, we don't know which one of these four guys is going to pop this year. I mean like, you know, we feel good about all of them and probably Lindell is the one they feel the strongest about. But we, we, we don't know. I mean – Rookie point guards are hard to figure out and their development is uneven or second year point guards or, you know, in Lindell's case, just like NBA young point guards. But let's just have four. And then if one does, hey, congrats, you're the backup point guard. And if one doesn't, then we can go shopping for DeLon Wright or whatever. It's the process, except so much lower stakes. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, is maybe not maybe not lower stakes. You're you're fighting for a position on a contender. But also, this brings up the point, like. What do you do when Drew Holiday has has to miss time? That's what – so that's an interesting question. One of these guys doesn't start, I would imagine. So you just don't have a point guard? Yeah. Point point, Chris and Giannis. It would be fun if they put Giannis in the backcourt for the tip of those games. Yeah, that would that be That would be fun in itself. Even if his role didn't change that much, but he gets to be the guy who dribbles it up. I hope he would do a fun 2K thing. You know how they always do like the between the uh, – maybe not. Maybe let's not get carried away. I I trust the honest to do a between the legs dribble. Come on. Tom. No, but they do like throw it up in the air and like all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never see yeah. that stuff in real life usually. No, that's fair. Um, um, but yeah, what do you do with Drew misses time? John Horse? That's it. Do you just slide in Pat to start? And then – Kind of have to. And then Chris or Giannis is your point. Or, I mean, you know, I think the real answer is let's see how these guys play. Are we going to see a Lindell or a Ty Ty Washington or an Amari Moore or least likely a Jazzy and Gortman start this season? I wouldn't be totally shocked. It wouldn't shock me. Maybe they do it in shifts, like like to not exhaust everyone's NBA time at once. If they can't find a true "quote unquote" winner, the old like, the old yeah. Bud Wing strategy of just like we're gonna play this one twenty five minutes for this week, and then DMPs, and then sw- shift in this guy yep. probably makes more sense in this situation. Yeah, because you have actual limited time, and the guys are just less proven than some of those players were. But yeah, I mean, yeah, is Malik Beasley your point guard for a game? He's been working on his dribbling a lot. Yeah, this needs to get addressed. <laughs> it needs to what? It needs oh, to be addressed. addressed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be addressed. Like, because it's an issue. 
Yeah. Oh, like, yeah I think I this this is like this is proof that yeah, they, they know it's an issue. I mean, obviously they know it's an issue. Yeah. But I think like aside from the fact that Ty Ty Washington is just like a young prospect who like promising prospect, it's like you can who you can get for free. Besides that, like just the positional signing of it is like, yeah, they know they have an issue here. Yeah, and I still I don't I don't I'm not that worried about this position. I mean, I think the deadline I'm very worried about <laughs> The, the deadline for one of these guys to pop, they don't put the trade deadline on key dates anymore. It's February. Hey, really? Are you serious? Oh. It's not listed on this this uh, NBA.com thing. It's February something. It will be yeah. the um, the trade deadline. That's going to be the deadline for one of these guys to prove they can be the backup point guard. And let's be honest. They won without Chris. They they can win if Lindell Wigginton has to start four games in November. Like they're not going to be horrible, and they'll I think they'll be able to figure that out to a certain extent. I think if they don't feel good about one of these guys being a backup point guard by playoff, but not by play. Okay, one of these guys being a backup point guard in the playoffs by the trade deadline, then they will find someone. Yeah, because they kind of have to. Otherwise, they have to convert them. Like well, you, well, if you're if like you're a two way contract, too, yeah. yeah. If you're a two-way contract, you can't play in the playoffs. I know. Yeah. Oh, I'm just I'm making. I'm yeah, yeah. I, I got you. That. I got you. I, I'm, I'm enlightening the listeners if they yeah, if so, they didn't. So there'll be a roster move either way then. If, if, yes. If Lindell Wigginton or Ty Ty Washington pops and they're like, oh yeah, this can be our backup point guard easy, then they still need to open up a roster spot to convert them. Or if they don't feel good about any of these players, then they'll just have to make a more standard trade and again insert veteran point guard who. Is probably going to bore us all to death here. Yeah, George Hill, welcome back. <laughs> oh God, they, I think I don't think there's going to be a trade there. I think they'll. You can't uh, trade Thanasis to his pot to George Hill's podcast. Is that going to be the move? George Hill has a podcast. Yeah, he launched an IG, but I can't find the feed. He just keeps posting clips. What? <laughs> George Hill, pay me to consult on your podcast. This is launch just, is a is little bizarre. Is it like a bizarre. fake podcast just for? I think it's things? coming. I think it's coming. It's like Marjan? Mar- like Marjan. Yeah. Trade yeah. Marjan to the podcast. No, let's not do that. No, yeah, we need him. Is that the backup point guard? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Marjan. I you know I'm your biggest fan, but no. There are people screaming Ajax right now. Andre Jackson Jr. I And again, yeah. Like that's I don't also think he's a point guard. I don't think he's a point. I'd I'd rather have Marjan or Malik Beasley. I'd rather have Andre than either of those guys. I just I think he's a ball moving wing. I don't think he's a point guard. I think, I think he, he is he the can mitten. be a point guard, and that's different. Like that's why I'm not bringing it up right now because it's like young NBA players. It's like yeah, you can't put the ball in their hands right away. Do I think he can be a point guard? Yeah. Do I think he's going to be right now? No. I I don't think he can be a floor general point guard until his shot doesn't. Like make you chuckle. I think it's very That's hard. I, he's got good floor. I'm not saying he doesn't have good floor vision and a, a good handle. He's obviously athletic, but in the modern league, I just think it's so hard for guys who don't shoot at all. And I think as like an off ball, like screener, connective tissue guy, it's easier. But I think when you have the ball, like, I mean, is his guy just going to drop immediately the whole time? Like, I, I just think it's going to be difficult for that to function even more so than someone like Lindell or you know, Malik Beasley. I'm, I'm not saying you run Malik Beasley like he's CP3, but you know, bring up the ball and get it to Chris on the wing, and that's pretty much your job, to be honest. Like I'd rather do that than try and have Andre Jackson Jr. be a real point. It'll be interesting. Maybe, maybe he proves me wrong. I know I've said before we shouldn't judge him too harshly on Summer League, even though I am, of how bad the spacing was there. But I, I just don't see – true point guard in his future. I think he is – I think his ball movement skills are good for a wing player. They, I don't think they're like popping out as a point guard, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's valid. Like Brooke Lopez is a good shooter for a seven-footer. If Brooke Lopez shot like that at 6'7", he's out of the league. Yeah. And that's not – again, not hating on Brooke Lopez. Skill sets are different across positions. Yeah, that's fair. That's why that's Jokic valid. is busted because he passes like 
Magic Johnson, who was also busted in his time for doing that at 6'6", six, six, not 6'1", but Jokic does it at like seven feet tall, which is insane. Like he's not just a good passer for big men. He's just a great passer, which is broken. Like LeBron as well. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe not Magic and Jokic. Those are both finals MVP centers. That's true. That's so funny. It is. Magic, so, Magic like has... Oh, what it's cool one of the career. most disgu- like craziest things that's ever happened. It's like, yeah, rookie Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, probably at the time the greatest player of all time. No, no is, question. No question yeah. he was, yeah. Is, well, Russell, I guess, but yeah. He's out. He's injured. Uh, yeah, you you rookie point guard, you're, you're jumping center. You're, yeah. you're starting at center in the NBA Finals. Are you, uh, are you watching Winning Time? I'm not. I'm, I, st- I'm still in season one, and everyone's saying this season is even better. And I thought season one was good, too. Hmm. I should check it out. It's fun. I, I hear they make Larry Bird like a like a fun character. Yeah, they do. Um, people apparently Jerry West was mad. They made him out to be like an old dick, which I, maybe maybe that's unfair. I thought his character was funny enough that it wasn't too bad. But I mean, outside, I think the the best part is I mean John C. Riley as Doctor Buss is really funny, and then the actors they got for Magic and Kareem and some of the other players are really good. Like the acting is superb. Okay, okay, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, winning time, pay us. Yeah, HBO or Max, Max. or whatever. Sorry, we won't dead name you. It's Max. Max, <laughs> please <yeah>. pay us. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Um. Oh, Andre Jackson is the backup yeah. punkers. People get so mad if we don't address. It. He's clearly right there. He's going to be the punk. I I don't see it. And Horace didn't he, mention like, him either, I don't think. He didn't, uh, which is noteworthy. Yeah. Uh, but also, like, I will say there's a chance for him, too, considering, like, new head coach, new players. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, everyone's fighting at the same ground. Like, most players are fighting at the same yeah. ground. It's obvious. It's not like Giannis isn't fighting for players. Giannis, time. we haven't loved your camp. You're going to come off the bench. <laughs> Good Jason kid. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like a lot of these rotations, like the rotations aren't set. No. So you you have the opportunity if you are an Andre Jackson Jr. to showcase like, hey, don't forget about me. I can still do this, too, if you really want to. Yeah. Also, something I didn't mention with Ty Ty, uh, just like getting young Kentucky guys is apparently the new Bucks thing. I, I Historically, it's worked out at least decently well, especially if you don't have to spend top, top picks to do it. Yeah, Chris Livingston. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what's let's see what's happening. We haven't talked about Chris in a while. I'm I'm still excited for a rookie year, even if I don't think he's going to have that many minutes. I d- I think he's going to be mostly up with you this season. Yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know. Probably I think so. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know how much they'll actually send him down. Hopefully, I think they some. will. Yeah, I think maybe not as much as like a two way guy. Yeah, but I think he'll get down there a bit, considering like. He's not going to have a ton of opportunity to play with the NBA squad this season. I think this uh, is going to be the most fun herd season since Buford. I that, think so. That yeah. year, they just they just crushed it with the G League talent. They just had such a good team with Frank Mason, Jalen Adams, uh, Shannon Bogues as the third point guard is was crazy. This year, though, I think from a like a longer term Bucks perspective, I mean, all three of the two ways. There's an extra two way, so that's that's uh, always going to be more fun. And I think we'll see the rookies a fair bit too, which is going to be exciting. Andre Jackson and Chris Livingston, especially when the team is healthy. I think there's going to be some games we get both of them. Drew Timmy, who had yeah. a pretty fun summer league. Jesse Gorman. Gorman. Gorman's yeah. going to be a full-time G leaguer, it seems, unless he does win a two-way spot. And that's going to be really fun just by itself. Um, so I think this two-way, a lot of, lot of good guard play, which maybe, you know, maybe is just the, the herd front office kind of addressing, like, oh, let's just load up on guards and, try to get one big because the bigs are important. I do think when they lost um, um, Ibu Baji. Yes, thank you. Wow, great pull. Ibu Baji. It, it kind of threw their season off. They just didn't have another big. We'll see if that happens with Timmy as well. But yeah, it's going to be fun. Fun hurt season. That one's uh, maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we'll I, see. I mean, Ibu Baji wasn't like, you know, dominating on the a court. Raw, a raw He's so raw. Though. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like there's obviously a lot. Like he is an athletic seven foot. Yeah, Drew like, Timmy was uh, he was spider crab walking from perimeter spot to perimeter spot, guarding three point shooters. Rohan, don't hate him, the Tim man. 
uh, <laughs> I won't hate on the tip, man. Not this week. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be one. It's not only going to be a fun herd season. It's going to be a very interesting preseason. Yeah. Because these are opportunities for these guys to re- like. When's the last time the Bucks? Yeah, like we talk, the Bucks really haven't had a position battle in a long time. I mean, they've had like, will someone supplant the, Grayson? Is the closest that, they've really come. What was that year where it's like, where there was like an open roster spot, and they're like, they brought a bunch of guys into camp, and we're like, oh my god, who's gonna, who's gonna win? And then none of them won, and it was like, <laughs> it just remained was, open. No, was that the Stoskis like, year? I don't know if it was the Stoskis year. It was the, uh, it was the the year that uh, what's his DeAndre Liggins got signed. I think. Oh, oh, way back in the kid era. Yeah. Oh, I wow. think it was the kid era. Oh, where, I don't really remember this. There was like an open roster spot, and they brought in a bunch of vets yeah. to camp, and then they slowly cut everyone, and we thought someone won, but then they cut him too. <laughs> We're like, "What is happening right now?" Well, remember the Tyree... Dude, Am I going crazy? Do no, you not probably not. This? No, I just don't. I I just don't have a, as good a memory as you. Um, I I cert- that sounds like something that would happen. Do you remember the Tyreek Evans drama from like two years ago? I do. When he was on the herd, I think he only played a road game, and they just disappeared. Yeah, I think he got hurt, unfortunately. But it was like, oh, he's yeah. gonna make a comeback with the herd. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Jennings yeah. went from the herd. To we go the, in in six. Yeah. That's what, that's where it came from. That's where your iconic yeah, that's where the, came that's where the, it's for the culture came from. Not the yeah. original. No, not course. the, not the, uh, yeah, the original one, but you're, it's for the culture. Yeah. Uh, and then he came in, almost put up a triple double in his debut with the Bucks. Gotta say, crazy. I got signed by the Bucks. Yeah. He's still, it always makes me chuckle. He's still technically one of the Wisconsin herd call-ups on the wall. Like, Unheralded Brandon he, Jennings. Yeah, he got he t- got yeah, called he up from the G League to the NBA. But I was, I was like, yeah, it's, I think it was – oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Te- technically definitely correct. Was, Just like yeah. the uh, world champions thing. Oh, what's your what's your take on that? I, I mean, I think it's technically incorrect for them to do it, but we all know the deal is my take. Yeah, you can't – like, yeah, obviously it's wrong. Yeah. Like, you're not the world champion. But find me another team in the world that's going to be yeah. the – Nuggets. It's, it's not. And people go, oh, why doesn't the Champions League champion say that? Maybe they should. I don't know. I that's 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 their thing. But also yeah. also it's the World Series of Baseball. No one's freaking out about that. Which that one is maybe close. I mean, didn't the USA just lose to Japan? But I guess all yeah, the, but most of the best the, players are in the MLB. They lost that's the, the thing. world. The USA did not win the World Baseball Classic. Like, yeah. It's and I I don't know why people are freaking out about the NBA when the MLB's worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably I mean, but it's just like I think the NBA is the most extreme example of having like all the best players from around the world play in the NBA. And the MLB is also like this, obviously Shohei, probably not as many, I would say. It feels like there's more top players still playing over in like Japan than I think more guys stay there. But I mean the NBA, I mean Jokic, Luka, Giannis, like Embiid, these are all the best players from that would be playing in their countries or across the world or in Europe or wherever else. And they all play in the NBA. I mean, it's like, it's silly to imagine any team would compete with an NBA champion. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not going to happen. Technically it's wrong. Noah Lyles, like technically you're yeah, right. He's, he's but technically also, correct, but it's like, who cares? Yeah. It's like, why are you making such a big deal about it? I wish he would have picked American football for this. That I still would be the funniest one. Yeah. Imagine that, that a non-NFL be... team trying to contend with literally any NFL team, even the worst, an 0-16 NFL team. Oh, they would get crushed. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. I don't think that about the NBA. I think the worst NBA team like might get, might get – has some trouble with like, I don't Didn't, know. Didn't like an Fenner Australian Bache. team beat uh, – Yeah, in, in those preseason in games. Preseason beat beat game. like OKC or the Spurs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's like – I mean to, I, w- I would say like it's it's more realistic – for an NBA team to probably yeah. lose, but that's because there are a lot of good talent elsewhere. And also, but there's... also like in a competitive environment, if you want to call it like the World Finals or something, yeah, yeah, the 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 Nuggets. Who, like I'm just using the Nuggets because they yeah, they're the, the champ. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Nuggets will crush. Them. Yeah, like what is what is the uh, freaking what's his name? Uh, Your Xavier guy Mumford Gershon. Doing- you yeah, what Gershon is Yabuselli? Yabuselli, what's he doing against Jokic? <laughs> I mean, I just like, and this isn't to denigrate any other league, but I mean, the last three Euro League, and I think Euro League has got to be like the next best 
basketball it is, league. It is. So, Real Madrid is the current EuroLeague champ. So the last three MVPs of EuroLeague are uh, Vesnikov, who's coming over. We'll see how he looks. Misic, who I think is also coming over. We'll see how he, he is looks. coming over. I would imagine they're they're going to be like you know good NBA role players, maybe starters. They're not going to be all NBA players, uh, and those are the MVPs. The middle one though is Nikola Mirotic, like a fine a fine NBA player who we hate his guts, but like overall a fine, he's good he's a good NBA player. He's an MVP there. He is like a a good seventh man in the NBA. There is just Again, a and clear I think, difference. I think Gershon Yabusele is a great example because I just like I, back in June I was at a stadium where they're chanting his name. Yeah, like because he's dominated, and it's like, bro, this guy got cut from the Celtics. Yeah, I mean, like I think Shane Larkin had a dominant season overseas yeah. at one point. Like, there's just I was like I, be I, I was going, like at this at this game, which was the semifinals of the Spanish, like the Euro League finals had already happened. Real Madrid had already won. And I'm just at the semifinals of the ACB or whatever it was called. It used to be the ACB. I think it's still technically the ACB, but they yeah, the, they probably the put a sponsor are, on it. Or yeah, something. the playoffs are yeah. branded. Yeah, of course. Um, and it's, it's coming here too. It will eventually. But uh, yeah, it it was like Henry Ellenson's on the other <laughs> yeah. team. Like it's like Gershon Yabusele, and you still got guys like Rudy Fernandez playing for Real Madrid, who are like national heroes. Yeah, and like Rudy Fernandez's NBA career ended a long time ago. I mean, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. This is a world thing, not a, a team competition. But Rondé Hollis Jefferson is averaging like forty a game in uh, for Jordan against other nations' best players, and he was not an NBA. He's like trying to get back in the NBA. And to be fair, that is a solid. He has a solid like shot. People are looking at him differently now. They're they're looking at him in the first place now, which they weren't before. I, I don't know. If he's actually going to get a spot based off that, but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting for sure. And like this also comes at the heels like uh, the Mavs are going to Spain to play Real Madrid in yeah. the preseason, um, which it's it's full circle really because Lu- a sixteen year old sixteen year old Luca played against OKC in the preseason with Real Madrid, and that now he's fun. going to go play against Real Madrid. Yeah, I would but love yeah, to hear. I would short, love to hear from Luca or like Jokic if he ever speaks again on what they think about it. Jokic might not come back. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like maybe he he's won just the done. Time. Maybe he's done. Can you imagine if he's horse just race done? horse race league next season? He's already getting Aaron Gordon into it. I got him in my fantasy horse racing league. Sleeper. <laughs> not the horses. You got you got Jokic. Jokic, yeah, Jokic. But no, long story I, short is NBA champions are essentially world champions. I mean, they're the best team in the world, if you want to admit it or not. If, if you want to say they should go play a slate against the rest of the world, why? The Adelaide 36ers. Yeah. And again, we're not being disrespectful. We're just being realistic. I have a lot of respect for all of these other basketball leagues. I mean, we cover... The FIBA World Cup. We care about this stuff. You went to an ACB semifinals it game. Was, and, like, let me say, the ACB sem- one of the best basketball experiences of my life. Yeah. So I it's, mean, it's not disrespectful. Fan atmosphere-wise, we're not the world Incredible. champions. That's for sure. The NBA No, is fan atmosphere-wise, we're last. Yeah, which sucks. But um, I saw – this is way off topic, but kind of the same. I think tied into that, some people in Europe were like – because there was a tweet like – Here's how much it costs to see Messi play Philadelphia or whatever. It's so weird. But it's like, oh, it's $800 to standing room. And people were like, it would cost like 40 euro to see Messi when he was like, you know, oh, when yeah. he was my, playing. My, in. my ticket for the, again, the ACB semifinal. And I was like in row eight or something. Yeah. It's like 40 bucks. And like, why, why do Americans think this is good? And I'm like, it's a good question. It's not good. It sucks. It's not. It's terrible. It's terrible. But yeah. it's because. Why do you want but, to pay that's more why, money? <laughs> that's why our fan thing sucks because people can just pay to get in and then the diehard fans get priced out. Yeah. And that's why nothing that's is loud because it's it's families of eight with polos on in the thing who are just like, oh, good dunk shot. I, and I guess Sidney Moncrief is there too. I was going to say shout out Sidney Moncrief. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he wearing a polo in these no, games? No, Sidney. <laughs> That's Sidney at the game. Oh, man. Where's Johnny back when you need him? Couple stops, couple threes. <laughs> oh, man. Old school Bucks fans love this. Jennings knocks one down. Bucks within 34. <laughs> 
Oh man, the good old days. Would you rather have those days or now? Uh, those days, you know what? Let's ship off Giannis peak of his peak of his value, and we could win forty four games every year forever, which adds up over time to more than winning fifty six for the next couple say, of years. I will say, not going to win forty four games. <laughs> 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 They're they're just straight up not gonna win forty four games. That's, that's in my uh, tie tie is all NBA alternate reality. Hey, I mean, like if tie tie Washington is him, if he's next, then we're good. Is, then we're good. Yeah, with Giannis. Yeah. Also, because we're not. No, idiots. trade him. That we need to open up the minutes. Yeah, trade him. Trade him to what is it? OKC, San Antonio, or Toronto? Those are the teams that have been mentioned recently. I mean, Dallas is the one that makes the most sense. They still have anything to trade. That's what I was going to say. It's yeah. not Dallas. Unless uh, they want to OK send Luca. Yeah. Which I still wouldn't want. No. No. I mean, it would make no sense for that. Well, I guess if you just thought Kyrie and Giannis was such a good pairing, but they wouldn't do that. The Bucks shouldn't do that either. No, the Bucks should not. Also, the Bucks are not going to trade Giannis yeah. unless he specifically asks to be traded. They certainly shouldn't. They should never. Even if he says he won't resign, ride it out. Yeah. Why would you trade the best player in franchise history? Unless he specifically wants to. The greatest player in franchise history. Yeah, the greatest buck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The greatest it's, buck. You have to be so the, – the problem of having Kareem for six years. You have to be very specific. Because yeah, obvi- yeah. Kareem is, at worst, in my opinion, the third best player of all time. I think that's his floor for sure. Yeah. So – Sorry, honest. Like you, yeah. you, you have like insane trajectory. You could maybe get there. You're not there right now. Should have, should have came in the league averaging thirty and fifteen and four or whatever. Yeah. What was that? Like a couple of weeks ago, we were just looking up Kareem stats. And it's just, like, easy to do. It's, it's crazy. Well, I was talking to John Macri on Knicks Film School. And it was like he was like eleventh in assists one year or something, or over his Bucks tenure. Really? It's just like yeah, because he just played all the games and got like four a game. I guess I don't yeah. know. Maybe it wasn't eleventh, but like. His assists will also sneak up on you along with everything else. And they didn't you even track his blocks. Yeah. I know. They didn't. He would have led the league in blocks 100%. Oh, yeah. Um, you, know, you know what's crazy? This is uh, a little bit off topic uh, of the off topic. Uh, Chris, I was looking up. I had Chris Middleton started 18 games last year. I know. That's like, they I feel won like 56. People, for, people forget that. Blow it up. Like 18 games Chris Middleton started. Blow it up. second best player. Insanity. He was 23rd in assists in 72-73. It's crazy. Like, that means he's better than some starting point guards because there's 30 starting point guards. Yeah. Although he was not – oh, he missed – oh, he missed – actually, he only played 76 that year. That was a bad year to pick. Wow. Were there 30 teams back then? No. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe not 30. No, but here, let's see. This this season, he played 82 his second year in the league. Sophomore Kareem led in points and points per game. Wilt had him in, in rebounds, though. Um, I believe he – let's see where he was in assists that year. Not as high. Never mind. Just only 45th, which still not bad. Kareem, you're slacking. Slacking. Slack and only 45th in assists while you're leading the league in scoring and rebounding. 23-year-old no. Kareem at that time, Lou Elsinder. Um, yeah, 20, 23 years old, 31, 16, 3.3. Not bad. Is anyone ever going to do that again? No one's ever going to do this. Year three, Kareem. 44 minutes a night. 34.8 points, 16.6 rebounds, 4.6 assists. Just, just a different thirty-five different a animal. night, different animal. At twenty-four years old, I mean, we could. I mean, Luca maybe could. How old's Luca? Uh, I think he's like twenty-three, that. right? Ah, uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, Luca is twenty-four. Excuse me. Yeah. So he's twenty-four. He just averaged thirty-two. It's true. Don't think so, he's going to get the sixteen rebounds. Ah, that one is a little bit of a trick. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I don't know. No yeah. one's no one's ever going to do that again. Not not coming into the league like that. I mean, the last player, Luca Cooper was one Flag, of the, is he him? <laughs> Dude, Cooper Flag is going to 
There's going to be a lot of discourse about Cooper Flag. Why do you say that? Can't quite put my finger on it. I just think he's going to be. He's the next Larry Bird. Time. He's going to be Outkick's favorite player. He's the he's the next Dirk Nowitzki. There's going to be a bunch of articles for people who don't watch NBA. Like finally, a good-natured trash talker. This is what we needed. A he's, lunch a lunch to... pail guy. Yeah, lunch. He wants to play for the Celtics too. Did you see that? Oh my god, I hate him already. Because he's he's from Maine, I think. Of course he is. And he said, like, he was talking to Jason Tatum. He's like, I'd love to play with him. I don't think it's going to work out that way, but I, I, yeah. I want to. Who wouldn't want to play for the hometown team? Bro, you're from Maine. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how the Boston teams get New like, cause Probably just because of the Patriots. They get the whole region. They get all of it. They get the entire New England area. Which is, I mean, it's The Bucs should, like, the Bucks should expand. Grown, the Bucs should expand. Let's get Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, let's take – they should have Iowa. You know what's crazy? I, I have a friend who lives in Iowa. They get blacked out from Bulls games, Bucks games, and Timberwolves games. <laughs> the NBA hates Iowa. No wonder they watch yeah, they college. Do. Yeah, they, the NBA hates Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri. Damn. Montana, Wyoming. Is this all – are you just naming states or are these also blackout riddled states? I think, I think some of them are blackout states. Blackouts just suck. Black blackouts don't make any sense. I Hopefully, think, uh, the yeah. NBA is doing a thing. It seems like we'll see. We'll see how long it takes for it to be comprehensive. Is, but Phoenix is doing something. Right? Yeah, Phoenix they, is fighting diamonds. Yeah, but no, they bought it out, didn't they? I th- well, they have the rights. I or think so, but I thought there was still like some messiness going on because of what they want to do exactly. But yeah, they're trying to just make Suns games more accessible. A wild concept. Crazy. Good job. Good job. Like Matt Ishbia, he's a, he's wild, but it's like, yeah, if you have if you own a sports team, you should do it for the fans. And you know what? He's doing it. Yeah. He it's like his personality might get in the way sometimes. Uh he might flop uh when he's not playing a game. I forgot but about that. You know what? There's no ethical way to be a billionaire, so at least try and make some make up make up for it somehow. Yeah, by letting us watch free basketball. That's a good. Yeah, exactly. That's a good trade Also, it, it also could be interesting when. Uh, did you see the reports that Apple is maybe looking to oh. buy ESPN? Oh my god, that'd be wild. Yeah. yeah, like Disney would like sell that off. Well, we're clearly getting back to cable. Yeah, hundred. It's going to be digital, but it's we, going to be never, like we've never left. We left for a little bit, and then it got everyone realized it's more expensive if you buy them all individually, mm-hmm. and you can just do the bundle. Which yeah. again, this this is. Cable. We've had this. And but the thing is everyone took everything off cable, so now you do have to get like more expensive bundles. Well, yeah, well, but that's right, but that's like the ESPN Disney Plus thing, like, oh that's a good deal. Hulu. Oh, yeah. like, oh, if you combine these three things and pay basically the price for one, it works out for that's crazy. It's crazy, right? Wow. And now and now if Apple gets in, right, let's let's merge Apple into the mix and it's gonna be a whole thing. Well, because like Apple's already been dipping, not to go full Ben Thompson here, but like uh, <laughs> Tech Ben Apple, Tech Rohan. Yeah. <laughs> uh shout out Ben Thompson, I guess. <laughs> but uh, and sure. Tech Re- it's actually it's actually uh, I, I enjoyed what they uh, put Shout out to Damon Rangula. He writes there too, or is he just share it? Does he? I don't I think know. He, I, he shares it a lot. He's a big fan. Good guy. He's too. a big fan. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't follow me back. It's fine. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, Rohan never forgets. We're in the weeds. Call anyway. back to the last pod. <laughs> uh, we're, uh, but like Apple's already dipping their toe in like with baseball. They're trying to get into oh, yeah. sports. And with ESPN, not only do you get the marquee. Um, A lot of games. I and mean, NBA games. Monday Night like, Football. You get the finals. Oh, yeah. Uh, every you other the, year. No, it's always been on ABC. Oh, well, would that come with ESPN though? Because it's technically it's technically ESPN on ABC. Oh, so Disney because they have ABC, they just like run it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Or I don't know. I I I assume maybe the finals stay on. I mean, yeah, like, the finals have to be on TV. You can't put the finals yeah. on a streamer. Um, but you get that. You get UFC pay per views. You get yeah. like a lot, like Monday Night Football. Yep. You get like Mar- Sunday night baseball. You get all of these things. Plus, like Sports Center first take. You get you get everything. You were saying good things for a while there, and then I'm I'll, not saying those are good. I have a Sports B-ball, Center used to be good. Yeah, it used to be. I have a b-ball ref page open, and the top video on this ad is Giannis draws interest from Lakers and Knicks after challenging Bucks brass undisputed. And I just imagine this is the worst video of all time. 
Oh, yeah, because I think the report was that the Lakers and Knicks would be interested. What a shock. Crazy. We we should you start know, we should start reporting the, like let's get us let's get us aggregated. Here's a is yeah. anyone listening? The Dallas Mavericks I mean, would be interested in potentially acquiring Giannis Atetokounmpo per Bucks insider Ty Ty Windish. Uh, one time, I don't know if you were, one time when I was like when I was still writing for Behind the Buck Pass, I like threw out a fake like oh Paul yeah trade. And then it's like NBA insider <laughs> Ron Cotty proposes Paul George trade for the Milwaukee Bucks, and it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> You're an insider compared to a normal person. It's all about perspective. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I was like, sure. <laughs> All right. Why not? <laughs> everything uh, everything in media is a mess right now. Yeah. That's why you should support your local podcasts. Yeah. And your GSPN. Local, your local blog. Yeah, you should support only GSPN. Yeah. And no one else in the country. Maybe a you get like three others. Three's a lot. <laughs> Roha. Don't be greedy <laughs> with people's attention. Hey, we have so many podcasts. That's true. It's like you got to be able to keep up with all of them. Our Milwaukee Brewers podcast, Talk of the Tundra. That one I did on purpose. <laughs> yes. That cruising was... for a bruising. I don't want to talk yeah. about Brewers right now, though. Listen yeah, to those guys. A little, I... little depressing. Hey, they still have a lead in the division. I know. I know. And they get to play another series against the Cubs. Yeah. I hate Which losing to the potentially... Cubs, though. It's so bad, especially when you get game one. And game three, it's like you get – you get a master, not maybe not a masterpiece, but it's like only gives up one run. Yeah. Only gives up one run. And that was like on a hit by pitch and then error, right? Yeah, something. I didn't catch the side of the game. I mean, their winning run, it was would have been an out if it doesn't go off the foot of Paguero or Piamps, one of those two. Yeah. It's very, very stupid. And then game two was they would have hit like four dingers, but it was a freaking win. Oh, game two. Game game two, excuse me, not game three. Yeah, Yeah, game three was that. I think, yeah, Woodruff gave up two in game two, I think. And then game two. And that was like. He gave up two? He might have. No, I think he gave up one. I think he gave up two, but I could be wrong. Yeah. It was very, very slow. He got no run support. Yeah, no. No run support. Uh, what other podcast do we have? Talk of the actual talk of the tundra. Yep. Talking about the Green Bay of, Packers, like we mentioned earlier, week, they're going to be doing one. a yeah, they're going to be doing a, a win prediction spot. Maybe you get a special guest in there by the Maybe. name of uh, Andrew Snyder, potentially. Yeah, um, big Panthers guy. Keep big pounding guy. the funniest Keep... team hashtag ever. There's no way that's true, is it? Look it up. <laughs> I'll Google that's it right thing, now. That's the one thing to have on X.com. Hashtag keep pounding. <laughs> Carolina uh, Panthers team hashtag. Oh, it just gave me their their, their site. I'll find it. Nope, it's the it's their only thing in their bio. Hashtag keep pounding at Panthers. Hashtag keep pounding. X dot com. Make sure you check out Talk of the Tundra. <laughs> all, of your, all of your Packers and NFL stuff. Uh, cruising for bruising, like we mentioned. Make time for this. Win in six. We'll be back on this pod someday. Uh, feed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, because the season is starting to creep up on us, I yeah, we, we got to like, do, do our, uh, our over under pod soon. Around fifty days, we have to do uh, uh, something with the buck stock market information coming soon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, less than fifty days, or around fifty days, I think, till the start of the NBA season, and less than that till preseason. Maybe, uh, maybe next week or the week after, we'll start our over under series going around the league. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah. fun. Will be maybe not next week because we're we're not going to have a normal Eurostep this this week due to yep. uh, due to events events and Labor Day events and Labor Day I forgot about Labor Day yeah we're uh, going to labor but, a little less yes but um yeah expect us to be back the following week yeah uh, on our normal schedule we had to do this emergency Tai Tai Washington pod even though we spent the last half an hour just rambling yeah if uh, if Tai Tai Washington does anything maybe we'll have a pod late next week too we'll see. What do you mean if he does anything? It's like a cool social post. Oh, okay. it was like, what is he supposed to do? <laughs> he got to put up eighty somewhere. That's the rules for young Bucks players. Go to go to the crossover, put up eighty. Just and pull up, pull up to FIBA, and just like volunteer for teams. That's what I expect. Yeah, I mean, like Jordan's still playing. Like all these teams are playing their like qualification right. or stuff. Really. Yeah, they're still playing. Oh, I didn't know that. It's uh, I don't know what it's for, but it's the classification games. I oh, think. Well, yeah, I know there's a, like one more tournament after this too to qualify for Olympics. It's going to be big for Greece and Giannis if they get in or not. Actually, 
Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. Like France and Iran are like playing right now as we record. Oh wow! Uh, France is beating Iran by twenty. Uh, but yeah. On that note, I think I, th- I think we did all the plugs already. Yeah, like, we did. Yeah, check out gspn.info. Uh, what a weird podcast! It's a fun one. Fun one for sure. This is the off season. Hope hope you enjoyed all five of you that are still listening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe maybe we're just talking to no one. <laughs> we're talking to each other. Yeah, exactly. What this more can just, you ask for? We just have our convos on the internet. That's basically what this is. But uh, pod random. We'll we'll talk to you next time. Right. <laughs>